Wow. Wow. Ross and I want to just publicly announce that this is day one of us eating chomps beef sticks. Just just chomping chomps. Until chomps decides to sponsor us. I can't stop eating beef sticks. So we gave Ross a beef stick. We gave me a beef stick. We're setting up the cameras. Ross's beef stick is gone. It's gone. So then I had to give Ross a small smidge of my beef stick. A smidge of, of beef stick. And he's been waiting to eat it. Would you want to pause so that you can chew that up? I just, I'm going to do a little gnaw, like kind of like a, like a, you know, like you feed a horse a carrot and they kind of do the little like teeth out thing. Like they want to bite <laughs> your finger off. I'm going to, it's kind of. And then we'll just make that, that, that'll be the social clip. Okay. He's, it's getting really graphic here, my guys. God. Um, if you haven't had chomps, this is not an ad. This is not an ad. This is not an ad at all. These are just so damn good. They're just little proteiny beef sticks. I just I'm noticed they've got an inspirational quote. Never forget to be thankful for what you're capable of today. Hashtag champions. Okay. Do you have, do you have a quote in there? Where's your... <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> How much beef stick do you have? I right put a now? lot of beef stick in my mouth. My God. Wisdom is knowing what path to take. Integrity is taking it no matter how hard it is. Holy shit. So true. Wow. So fucking true. I wish I didn't put half a stick in my mouth yeah. right when we roll the camera. That's not integrity. Mm -mm. Integrity is knowing how much beef stick you can possibly fit in your mouth at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be thankful of what you're capable of today. I'm capable of eating maybe a hundred beef sticks. I feel extremely capable of eating beef sticks of free range turkey. My God. Okay. Um, Give me a wrapper. We can't give them that much branding. Okay, you're right. Time, but you're right, guys. If you enjoyed that kind of like fun food play, yeah, that big, was a blast. we're big into food play. Big into food stuff. When should I eat this? Did you finish your beef stick already? I, I did. I know it's gonna be. You finished two beef sticks. You you beef sucker. Please. <laughs> <laughs> don't you I like dare, how you held back. You're you like you you beef sucker. Beef sucker. Don't you dare point that accusatory finger at me. I just I'm gonna make this last. Okay, you'll I'm just gonna, be like nibbling on it throughout the episode. Yeah. Okay, I love that. Demoted. Welcome to Demoted, everyone. Welcome to Demoted. We're back. Thanks for being here. Our producer actually put a just a note for us at the top, which yeah. like, of course, us reading this outline the second we arrived here, we didn't quite see, but it said, bring a disguise. Bring a disguise. So, so for those of you watching uh, yeah. from the comfort, oh God, it doesn't really fit in the- Yeah, I just realized that too. I actually, I think my ears might be bleeding. Wait, hang on, this doesn't fit at all. I'm putting on these glasses, these robot sunglasses. Mine doesn't fit, so. That looks good. <laughs> Can you recognize us? So these are our disguises. And the reason we have disguises on is because today we're talking just a little smidge a little on smidgy. imposter syndrome. Yeah, we're talking about imposter syndrome. We're talking about the uh, the Dunning-Kruger effect, which I'm sure all of you know. It's like a top five effect. It's like a top five of like of all the effects well, yeah. in the world. I like, would say Dunning-Kruger like does come like at easily, least fourth or fifth. Easily. 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 I don't think anyone would doubt that. We're going to do a little Dear Demoted because you guys like to write us stuff and- we like to talk about it. We'll We're going to do a little promoted or demoted. As we always do. And Ross, what did you do like yesterday, last night on your Instagram? Because I saw a bit of it and yeah. then I stopped watching out of fear. Yeah. I um I made the terrible mistake of putting people's SKO, otherwise known as SCO confessions. And what's a SCO, you may ask? Well, in sales, we do these uh, yearly meetings called sales kickoffs, mm -hmm. SKOs. So we call them SCOs. We're Companies will fly the entire sales team into one place. Sometimes it's Vegas. We know how that'll end up. Sometimes yep. it's Dallas. Sometimes, you know, it's it's remote. But when they're in person, things get out of hand. You put a bunch well, of salespeople together. Location is less important. It's really the actions that these people are taking. A horrifying. Horrifying. And Open bar. Think again. Yeah. The common thread is alcohol. Definitely a common thread. And um, people are doing horrifying things. Things that made my eyes bleed. Things I couldn't even post on the internet because I... I didn't want Instagram to take me down. Totally. But we're going to read them to you today. We're going to read a few of them. I flew to LA yesterday. I posted this on my Instagram yeah. story and my meeting got canceled and, oh God, I have to watch him eat. He's eating his beef stick. Mm. My meeting got canceled and I had to literally deplane and then get on the nearest plane and fly home. So I spent the whole day on a plane. If I'm extremely agitated, that's why. Well, what happened on the plane flight back? Oh, oh my God. Someone <laughs> was sick. And I'm expect so then these paramedics come on. I'm this dude better be in a stretcher. Yep. It's a 45 minute flight. Yep. Like if you can't, you can't hold it, it, LA to SF. This guy's walking out on his phone holding his briefcase, just like trotting oh, he had a tummy out. Ache. Trotting out. I he don't had know. A tummy ache. Do we have a tums on the on the plane on board? Sorry, I'm confused. We're gonna need to ruin the day of 250 people. Everyone, the guy next to me was like, I can. 
cannot believe. I'm like, oh good, we're talking shit now. Now I yeah. feel comfortable. Oh, I would have been like, if I don't see a body bag on here, then, I, then totally. you better get this plane in the goddamn air. Totally, get it in the air. Yeah. And he's just sitting there scrolling. I'm like, I'm sorry, what do you, you just grounded a plane. And you're- And you're on Instagram reels? Yeah. yeah. I was pissed. I would be very pissed. I like under my breath as he walks by, I'm like the walk of shame. The yeah. guy chuckles next to me. I'm like, thank God I needed that laugh. Yeah, right. Wow. Cause everybody's feeling it. Everybody's feeling it. Everybody's ready to put that person just to the, just to this burn them at the stake. Maybe in a body bag. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about before we jump into like our two favorite effects yeah. and syndromes? Yeah. Our, yeah. We're talking about our, some of our favorite syndromes, some of our favorite, favorite effects. effects. Yeah. Anything else like what happened in your life? You had no, the flu. No, like- I've had the flu for two goddamn weeks. I mean, I was looking at the uh, Valentine's day episode and you can just see in my face. I I'm ill. You are ill. You can hear it in my voice. It's there. I'm Ill. It's I'm there. Ill. And I didn't even know it was, I was about to be grounded like that plane for four days. You just were, in bed. you really were. So yeah. not much like fun stuff has happened. Not a lot of fun. Okay. Mostly feeling like shit. <laughs> so, I love that. Isn't that funny and fun for me? So let's jump into imposter syndrome. Yep. For yep. those of you who like, we have people banging down our doors being mm-hmm. like, chat about this, talk about, about imposter the, syndrome. tell us about the Dunning-Kruger effect. Yep. So <laughs> fine, we'll, we'll do it. You, you asked. You asked, we shall deliver. Yep. Ross, please read the definition of imposter syndrome. <laughs> For the folks back home, get that beef stick out your yeah, throat. Yeah, sorry. And, uh, my mouth is so dry right now. But Chomps, we love you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we could use a hydration sponsor. Um, <laughs> all right. Imposter syndrome or imposterism is a psychological occurrence in which people doubt their skills, talents, or accomplishments and have a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as frauds. Despite external evidence of their competence, those experiencing this phenomenon do not believe they deserve their success or luck. Thank you for defining that. Should we like on the flip define Dunning Kruger and then we can kind of go back and forth between these two? We could. I'm just, I fear we will confuse them. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, stay with us, folks. Stay with us here. And so, I'm, 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 I'm basing that purely on my followers being able to read and understand it mostly a third grade level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based off of the DMs I, understand I get. That. My followers would be well able to, to digest. Anyway. Yeah. So imposter syndrome, it's real. Have you felt it at any point? I feel it all the friggin' time. You do feel it. I feel it. Uh, yeah, I feel it. I think, you know, it's it's all sh- self-doubt, right? Just like, why am I here? How am I here? Yep. I ain't supposed to be here. Like, I'm just a dude doing dude stuff, being a being a dude in this world. And did you feel it in work? Or would you say, like, maybe Stanford was the breeding ground for this um, syndrome, our favorite syndrome? Our favorite syndrome. Yeah, I mean, Stanford definitely is a spot. I mean, everybody there. I mean, it's like one of the through threads of your entire experience at Stanford. Everyone's like, everyone else here is so intelligent and smart. Like what the fuck am I doing here? It's funny because they present as if like they deserve to be there more than anyone else on earth. Like everyone is so confident. Well, that's from what the happens GSB when people you, I've met. when every single person is on Lexapro, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, exactly. The, the, the amount of anti-anxiety meds taken on that campus, it, it's it's truly staggering. Yeah. But it's, it's real. I mean, I think one of the things, and, and I've learned this as I've gotten I've been fortunate enough to speak to people at at all levels of all companies of all sizes. And and you just kind of learn, and this is my quote, and you can quote me directly on this. Nobody knows shit about fuck when it's all said and done. Let's clip that because I agree. Nobody knows shit about fuck. They're all just trying to figure it out. You know, some people might have, you know, experience can obviously affect our worldviews and and how we might handle a situation the next time. But everybody has got to experience things for the first time. Everyone is faking it till you make it. Like yes. everyone is, not just you. Yeah. So if you feel this imposter syndrome because you're faking it, know that your peers, your your, your subordinates, people above you are doing the same. Yeah. I mean, everybody for the most part is just trying to do they do the best they can. The funniest thing I heard taking this outside of work context is like our parents are experiencing parenting for the first time still of us at this age. Yeah. Like yeah. we think our parents know everything. Like when they, they popped us out, they were probably like, what the hell is this person doing here? Horrifying. Horrifying. You just have to change your whole life now that this yeah. like child is you just here. Gotta you just got to figure it care out. Of. Yeah. Like yeah, we've we, been doing that for years. We live it in a society. Yeah. And, and somehow we still function and somehow people have continued to figure it out. Totally. And that's the thing. Like there's like a Richard Branson quote. Who's like, if you feel like, you know, you're not capable of doing the role and like based on a promotion, you should just accept it. Cause you're going to, you're going to figure it out. That was a very loose interpretation of he's got some inspirational quotes. It was a little more LinkedIn. nuanced. Yeah. More nuanced. I mean, probably better worded totally. and, and more concise, but totally. I mean, take the role, try to figure it out. Everyone has to start somewhere. Can. Yes. Like, please. It's, it's super hard to not feel that. Like, again, I, you know, I'll stand, people ask us for advice and it's like, well, yeah, you're sure us. You're sure you want that. I'm 26. I'm just, let's make sure that's what you want. Right. From me, work advice. Yeah. Please. I must project a lot more confident than I am. 
Literally. But sure, I'll, I'll spit I'll spit some some knowledge at you. Hope it helps. Hope it helps. Hope it, it helps. Probably won't. Everybody's feeling it. Everybody feels it in some capacity, especially when people make that transition into leadership roles. They're like, what am I doing here? Why am I here? Yeah. And with us, with like building our followings and starting making these silly little videos, we never thought we'd have a following and like influence or any of these yeah, things. Yeah, that wasn't the intent. And like every day Ross and I make videos, we're like, does this suck or- should we post it? Like we're constantly yeah. questioning and overwhelmingly, yeah, it does yeah. suck. Yeah. We still post it. Every now and then you have that one moment where you're like, I deserve to be here. And then very quickly you're humbled. You're like, that was, no f- that was totally. very, very fortunate. And lucky. What was a recent I deserve to be here moment? Um, well, I finally had a couple videos just hit, hit the greater audience of- That, of, you're, that you hoped to hit. That I hoped would hit, that I yeah. thought would hit and actually did. I mean, I've tempered my expert expectations in life now. Generally, it's like, oh, this one's- gas. Everyone's going to love it. And then yeah. it just tanks. I'm like, well, <laughs> that one was for me, I guess. It, um, we always say that one was for us yeah. with videos. <laughs> but there's some that like genuinely are for us. And it's like, if you don't get this and you're not on this level, like that's fine. I can live with that. But there are other times where it's like, I think you're not on this hit. level, i.e. our shitty humor. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I also, I try, I try to not tie my worth into like the likes and the engagement that a video is getting. Cause oh, I, I'm purely, I think that based. that's a very, yeah. Metrics space is a very hard way to live life as like a individual person. Yeah. And so like, if my likability is tied to that, that's a very scary feeling. I try to tie it to those moments in person, actually, whether I'm speaking or I'm mm. on set filming a show or like in a production setting and the crew or the production team or the people are saying like, that was awesome those are moments that I'm like, okay, you're a real person who truly values me and what I'm offering. Like and now I can keep going and continue to fail online and feel less bad about it. Right. And that's where I'm usually just like, I know we don't know each other that well, but you can stop lying to my face. That's so funny. Stop lying to my face. Talk about self doubt. Yeah, yeah. Ross has enough of that. Yeah, I have, I have enough. I'm gonna take the glasses off now. I just realized those are still on my- I have no uh, idea where I'm looking. Like I'm looking at your nose cause I was too afraid. Like I didn't know where to look. <laughs> well, the glasses are off for everybody. Um, if you're just listening, you're welcome and congratulations. But like in to apply the content world to the real world, like we fail constantly and that's just a pill we have to swallow. Yeah. You failing in your job feels like the world is coming to an end, but know that like it's okay and it actually makes you better. Yeah. And of course, nobody's thinking about you more than you. Totally. Nobody is. So like you're going to overanalyze yourself. You're going to sit there and pick yourself apart in ways that like people, other people just don't have the time and, and honestly just don't give a shit enough to, to do that to you. No, if us two idiots can buy these mics and start a podcast, trust me. Yeah. You can get that promotion. And there's thousands of people out there right now. Just be like, this is proof why people shouldn't Should- buy microphones. Yeah, literally. <laughs> oh my God. This is proof. Every, not everyone should start a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not all opinions matter. Okay. Well, okay. Fine. If you don't want our opinions, that's okay. Yeah. We have a blast in these beanbags. Feel free to listen to f- for five seconds and just give us a one star review. They love doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Love it. Let's talk about the Dunning Kruger effect. Oh, yeah. Our favorite effect. You guys are mm. waiting on bated breath they, for us to read this definition. People are smashing that plus 15 seconds trying to like, when is Dunning when Kruger? When is Dunning Kruger? And, and, and just, you know, we're here. Okay? We're here for you. We're here. It's happening. The Dunning Kruger effect is defined as the tendency of people with low ability in a specific area to give overly po- an overly positive assessment of their ability. Yep. So, like, for example, us sitting in these beanbag chairs. Right. Right. It, it, one, one nuance to this is it doesn't have to do with intelligence. It's like your literal ability to execute and do something. So it's, it's faking it till you make it, but maybe in the, in a more literal and physical sense, in physical sense. Yeah. You know, I, I, f- I feel like this is most salespeople. Absolutely. You know, they're just so convinced that they can close. And it also results in people switching jobs and thinking the grass is greener and that like somehow their abilities. Like I'm way better than this, this popsicle stand. Get yeah. me out of here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm the top rep here. I should probably bounce and go make more money somewhere else. Totally. And then they, then they get stuck in the Midwest territory and nobody's buying shit. And yeah. all of a sudden they're like, ah, oh, this product sucks. And it maybe didn't entirely have to do with my skills. No, I would rather have imposter syndrome than Dunning Kruger personally. Personally. What would you have? Yeah. Uh, give, me impo- give me imposter. Give me imposter any know. day, 10 out of 10. Right. I mean, again, we mentioned our favorite effects. It is a top effect. Of, of course. Ours, but like, but it's not what we that. want to have. It's not what we want to have. Right. So have you, have you met managers. someone who like, I mean, me signing up for the A-level volleyball tournament, we talked about this yeah, in another yeah. episode, getting my ass absolutely wiped out there by these like actual semi-professional six, five women. That was a good real life example of Dunning Kruger. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I felt that when I was serving at that line, I was like, am I kind of Dunning Kruger affecting this? Right. And you, and everyone, that's why your team name was, you know, 
the Dunning Kruger. DKA. Yeah. <laughs> DKA, or DKE, DKE yeah, effect. Yeah, thank you. It's not an affect, it's, it's an effect. It's, it's an affect. Shit. Thank you for that. I was going to say, but I didn't, I just yeah, 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 have yeah, it. Yeah, 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 I wanted DKA. you to like make a public apology at next episode that no one asked for. Next like, a- hey guys, when I said DKA, I want you to know I, I actually meant, meant DKE. Right, right. And they're like, we didn't listen to that episode, you idiot. Yeah, we stopped at imposter syndrome. <laughs> We stopped at the beef stick bit at the beginning. <laughs> Literally, we were like, they're eating. This is grossing me out. Like, yeah. they turned it off. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Overall, what we want to say is like, everyone's faking it. Yes. If you have imposter syndrome and like, we do want to open it up, please share like for Dear Demoted if you're having an issue at work where we can actually kind of unpack specific areas yep. of like, why are you feeling this way? Is there anything we could add to it to potentially help? Because we've been in roles that we don't deserve before. Of course. We've- been on stages that we still to this day don't think we deserve to be on. Yep. Um, no one like, knows shit about fuck. No one knows shit about fuck. And that's and and that's the honest to god truth. I actually it reminded me of a story that this is probably not DKE. Okay. But it's getting it close. Makes me think of a guy. His name was Ben Ben Tinker. Ben Tinker. If you're still out there in kindergarten, we I went to Fernbank Elementary School in Atlanta, and there was this whole forest in the back, and we were arguing over whether this plant was poison ivy or not. And this guy, Ben, was like, of course it's not. Watch. Leaves of three, leave it be, Ben. He took those leaves of three and he stuffed them in his mouth and chewed them. 45 minutes later, Ben Tinker was in the hospital. Oh. His entire face had exploded. And you with your fruit skin allergy? Luckily, I I had imposter syndrome at the time. And I was like, there's (laughs) no way I'm qualified to eat this plant. No, there's no way. And he was like, my abilities of eating plants are so grossly I mean, shame on Ben Tinker's parents for making him think he's invincible. Be Tink. Yeah. Be Tink. Yeah. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. I wonder if he's eating leaves still. I wonder if, I mean, if if he followed this similar path. I wouldn't even have eaten a salad He might not be alive. He might not be alive. Yeah, there's a very, very real chance. He's bare grills in life. Just like, I'm going to drink my piss. Yeah, I'm going to drink my piss. I'm going to eat some poison. (laughs) Oh God. He's living off the land. Fuck it, I'm drinking my piss. Yeah. You know, we're out of water. Yeah. Plus, it's not working. Are, yeah. Okay. And I don't drink tap, so. Let's get into some corporate confessions. Let's get to our corporate confessions. SKO edition. Yep. These are on a story highlight on my page, by the way, called hookups. If you can't figure out where to find them. Which normally you would think sales kick off, like maybe other things would come from this large company event. But of course, the only thing we're hearing about, poo-poo, pee-pee, hookups. Yep. All right. Why don't you kick us off and read- one of these confessions. This is a nice short one to get us get us started. A couple of years ago, our company invited the class of new hires to SKO so they could quote, see the culture. One new hire AE got so drunk, he stumbled into the event hall's kitchen and urinated in their kitchen sink. He was terminated the next day. He was employed for a total of four days. And that's the culture we wanted you to see and be a part of. Yeah. Okay. This one's fun. A couple of years ago, SKO in Orlando, Florida, which I've been to several I've times I've been now. to Orlando way more than I like to admit. Yeah. I hate, what, are you, what, is, what are your thoughts on Disney before we dive in? Uh, d- it kind of grosses me out, weirds me out. Disney weirds sticky. me out so much. It's I know, sticky. of course, we'll get the Disney people, the Disney adults watching this, hounding us. I grew up on Disney movies. I love Disney movies. Being physically in like a Disney theme park, not for me. The Disney adults scare the living crap out of me. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Orlando. And I played, stayed at a place called the Rosen Shingle Creek, which is, it is just a conference mega center. You stayed there or this you're reading? I stayed there, but this is what makes me think of that. It would, this happened okay, there. It doesn't okay. say where it was. Okay. So a couple years ago, SKO in Orlando, Florida, huge publicly traded software company. There was a post day cocktail karaoke event. That already spells trouble. There was a fountain in front of the two main doors and two married employees were having sex drunk in the fountain and it was all being broadcast around TVs uh, in the conference rooms. Okay. The question I have is, are these people married to each other or are they married to other people? And the question I have is, why are there all these cameras on the fountain? I, I got and why it. is that being live streamed? Uh, you know? What do you mean? This is like OnlyFans before OnlyFans. What do you mean? I don't know. SKO for Fortune 1000, Senior AE. What's... Fortune 1000 is not worth you mentioning, can't, people. You can't say that. Yeah, Fortune 1000. Okay, you, you work at a, like a corporation. I get it. You, but work, at, 1, like, 000, you work at a company. Like We stop at 500. We have to stop at 500. We stop at 500 every time. Okay, continuing. Senior AE gets approached by private security hired by the company because he's too energetic and he's leaving the bathroom. They oh, search God. him thinking that he has coke. Dude was just wired that way. Also, someone asked the bartender of a hotel that 100% was rented out for our SKO where he can get blow. Uh, Bartender rats him out and gets fired. Truly symbolic of the level of micromanagement at that company. Left and have never felt better. Wait. (laughs) So the weird guy gets searched for for blow just because he's like that. Somebody else asks a bartender where they can get blow. The bartender rats that person out. That person gets fired for asking the bartender where they can get some blow. I mean- 
is this truly symbolic of the level of micromanagement at the company or sh should you maybe not be asking for blow yeah, to the bartender? Well, okay. <laughs> Nobody's fault. Nobody's fault here. It like continued reading. I thought it was gonna be like, isn't that crazy? It's like truly symbolic of the level of micromanagement at that company. Like how dare they? Like let the kids play. Yeah, I know. Is this not SKO? Are we not allowed to just rail lines? Gosh, okay. Sorry, okay. For, sorry for the the old corporate hammer stopping you from playing your games. Yeah, yeah, I know. What kind of, in this economy? The level of micromanagement. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they wouldn't even let us rip lines in the bathroom. I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah, gross. We work here. Demoted. We work here. Yeah, Demoted. exactly. Okay. Okay, speaking of poo-poo and pee-pee, here we go. Way back in the day, we had VP Club up in the Wisconsin Dells, which, okay. Okay, not the best location. Not the best location. <laughs> One of the newer sales reps who qualified got hammered and ended up pissing off a hotel balcony. Unfortunately, there was an entire family below trying to enjoy a family vacation. He was let go immediately and sent back to Chicago that night. Wow. The if you're going to pee on, an, on a, fa a young family. I do have to say like that does go outside of our company values. It does. Barely. Barely, but like just a little bit outside. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're going to do dumb shit at your SKO, the only rule is don't get caught. Okay. The first rule is really don't do it, but the second rule is just don't get caught. And the poor family. I mean, I mean that family. Our prayers just, go out to them. Just got the golden shower they didn't ask for. <laughs> totally. Brutal. Just a brutal L. I have one involving a BDR that got smashed and decided to play tickle monster with a female <laughs> sales director, whacked immediately the next day, and rode the hotel elevator like a zombie without pressing any <laughs> buttons to a floor. SKO brings out the inner monster in so many. Just imagine this person just... A staring blankly tickle at the monster. wall. Yeah, and then Tickle Monster. Tickle Monster? You can't be playing Tickle Monster, dog. You can't. Nowhere in any corporate setting do I think the TM card plays. No. The Tickle Monster card. What? It was just Tickle Monster. Also, like, who just, like, has Tickle Monster living within them? Like, imagine being at a bar. I mean, like, oh, get it. The, the, the espresso martini Tickle, hits. Tickle Monster. Here comes Tickle Monster. It's like, oh, fuck. Here comes Steve <laughs> with the Tickle Monster again. Oh, my God. Steve's doing his Tickle Monster bit. Like, honestly, people, and there's a theme in here. I'm just going to say it. Y'all got to stop touching. You got to stop touching people. You have to stop touching. You got to stop touching people without like, asking. Like, let's just do a nice firm shake and go back to and, bed. Yeah, and get out of here. Yeah. Do your drugs in your room. Yeah, seriously. Please. Please. Okay, here we go. This one just titled SKO Cringe. AE was wasted and furious at the awards dinner when his SDR didn't win SDR of the year. He loudly booed the actual winner and his manager told him to go sleep it off before he got fired. He left for around an hour before he returned drunker than before and confronted his table for quote ratting on him he was escorted out again and fired the following week oh my god low-key based standing up for his sdr who no. didn't win sdr there he's like yeah that's bullshit like please who that's like jay-z stand up for beyonce yeah that was a jay-z moment for that was sure. an absolute except, jay-z moment so like, like except like who cares about this like is it worth your rage why are you so full of rage i uh, i think it might be some anger there's some anger there's out there. some anger and it might be from the drugs that might doing. be from the cocaine SKO last year guy that has been in and out of cancer. Oh my God. Just go, just go there. SKO last year. I told you these just get worse. Guy that has been in and out of cancer treatments decides he is going to drink for the first time in a while mm -hmm. proceeds to get blackout drunk tackles our CEO to the ground, trying to give him a hug. Yep. Probably would have been still employed, but then also make some advances to one of our female in-house counsel immediately fired and sent home the next day. Everyone felt bad because his cancer had just come back and he was going to be facing treatment without company insurance. Even still, not the craziest part of that SKO, another person on the team skipped the mandatory SKO. And when the director called to ask where he was, informed management he was using his unlimited PTO and he was going to the Philippines for a month. Pretty bold move, he was fired the week he got back. Lot to unpack here. Just a tremendous amount to unpack. I and mean, we got seven suitcases of shit to unpack here. I mean, cancer survivor tackles a CEO decides to drink after doing what, you know, like cancer treatment, like, dr like steroids, basically drinking for the first time on a bunch of, you know, post-cancer treatment meds. CEO Not a to good the idea. ground. CEO goes to the ground and separately some dudes like, ah, I'll show up at SKO, but fuck it. I'm going to take PTO now and go to the Philippines. Hang on. What's happening? What's happening? Again, we somehow live in a society with standing buildings we have an economy, <laughs> people live their lives, and we're somehow we're not all dead. No. And no. I don't know how. I don't I don't know how. Here's a nice, here's a nice modern day love story. The team was heading to an offsite for SKO, and before we left, everyone was doing shots and having some drinks in the office. Okay, that's usually Classic. how this all starts. That's a progression. Two people were totally MIA when the bus was departing. They were found getting acquainted in the new mom's room. 
Ironically, they're married and have a kid together now. Well, now that's she called is practice. A new mother. Yeah, that's, that's called great. practice. That's, that's called, called practice. Practice makes perfect. That's 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 called practice. You're gonna love reading this one. I can't believe you're giving this to me. This is Hang just on. people need to stop touching. People need to stop touching. <sighs> Chicago SKO. Dude got so hammered, he asked his sales enablement manager if she's ever fucked anyone besides her husband. <clears throat> Same guy later in the night heard another rep might be a stripper and told her he wanted to sample the product. Sir, this is not a Costco. This is not a Costco. You don't just get to sample the product. <laughs> <sighs> These people exist. We said on another episode, ask questions, be curious. Be curious. We're now going to walk that back. Yeah. There are some questions you shouldn't ask. Yes. Be less curious. Be less curious. Uh, like figure out things yourself. Yes. Don't ask things of others. Yes. Especially questions of that nature. Don't be a doer. Do less. Certainly not in this As Paula case. Says, yeah. All right. I'll read one. I'll read one more. Okay. Actually, I, this is a stat. You guys love stats. Okay. So I asked how many of you sickos have a sex worker robbery story because everybody tells me how they went <laughs> I, to- I saw this poll. I'm like, Ross, I can't even keep watching. Like, what do you mean? 30% of people <laughs> said they have a story of the 30%- Of a sex worker robbery? Yes. Yeah, so so basically- so here, Can let me, you define that? Yeah. Let me read this story here because there's there's versions of this across the board. Okay. So SKO story, Fortune 100 company. See, we do say Fortune 100. That's fine. We that's do say below that's five. Fine. That's below 500. Dude gets too wasted and passes out in the hallway of a very nice Vegas hotel completely naked and shits himself. He, again, too much poo-poo, too much pee-pee. He and his roommate were also robbed by the hooker he brought home that night, was fired for obvious reasons. Okay, so here's the thing. A lot of people, I guess 30% of them apparently, know someone or are someone who has brought a sex worker back to their room in Vegas, was drugged, whatever, passed out, and proceeded to be robbed by that person. Company laptops, like company equipment, like how do you report that? People people are like, yeah, I know this guy who got his laptop stolen from a hooker. Like- That's crazy. Yeah. I'm so naive. Like, I just like, don't believe that these things happen and they do. And it yeah. makes me sad. Oh, wait, I need you to read this one because this one's very important. This one kept me up last night. This one kept me up last night. Two months ago at SKO, an AE went to sleep in his individual hotel room, apparently naked, because another AE blacked out, was knocking on his door. Naked guy goes to the door, naked and drunk guy starts fighting him in the hallway because he thinks naked guy is in his room. Mm -hmm. The door shuts and he's locked out, fighting drunk guy. Drunk guy falls asleep on the ground. Naked guy takes his sweater, pulls it over his junk, goes down to the front desk to get back into his room. Both AEs were fired. Justice for naked guy. Justice for naked guy. Justice for fucking naked guy. He's all the only crime he's committing is sleeping naked, right? Yes. And yeah, and I don't even know if that's like totally a crime. Which I mean, I would never crime. sleep naked because if something some shit goes down in the middle of the night <laughs> and I'm naked, that that's gonna be a problem. I'm always prepping for someone else to enter my room. Exactly. Right? Murderability. That's murderability. what Seth is Seth is always talking about murderability. Of course. And so naked guy now. Last night at about 12.30, I posted on my story, was like, hey, I just, like, I can't get over the fact that naked guy was fired. Like, all he was doing was defending himself and, you know, not what he anticipated. Turns out, I got, like, I don't know, tens of messages being like, no, the story's wrong. Like, naked guy's fine. He, like, still works there, blah, 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 blah. So, like. Why does everyone know naked guy? I guess, I guess a lot of people know naked guy. Naked guy's, like, a famous celebrity. Yeah, because I was actually making stickers, like, Justice for Naked Guy. I was making shirts, Justice for Naked you Guy. You have, like, the Obama Hope poster with right. Naked Guy. With Naked Guy, I was saying, like, yeah. I, the savages were ready to ride at dawn if Naked Guy commanded. We were ready to come save him. But he's okay. But it turns out he's okay. So some stories so do have a happy So I can sleep at night. I yes. can sleep at night. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for your corporate confessions, everyone. And those all happen at sales kickoffs, which happen every year. They're also known as GKOs, Global Kickoffs. RKOs, revenue or regional kickoffs, CKOs, company kickoffs. They're all some form of getting a bunch of sales savages together, drinking too much, and oftentimes career limiting decisions. Love that. Love so, that. I just made a video on like how companies think we'll react to the intro song at sales kickoff. Oh yeah. Which is just like always without fail, Katy Perry's firework roar. Firework, yep. Or or Pharrell's happy. One hundred percent. Yeah. And then no the one's C happy. ladies and gentlemen, your CEO. Yeah. <laughs> Can't stop feeling, <laughs> feeling in my body. And then the C suites all dance and just a bunch of white it's people. Like so awkward. Yeah, just cringe yeah. dancing. Yep. So that's the sales. That's a kickoff. And everybody's you're, like clapping, everyone's like, like robots, like a little other, like, hungover. Like, why are we here? Okay. Okay. Let's get into promoted or demoted. Promoted or demoted. One of our favorite segments. We haven't seen these, so we might have to do some filtering here. Yeah, we'll see. But do we like it or do we not like it? Let's dive right in. Yep. Being a perfectionist. Demoted. I am one, so promoted. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, it's horrible. It's a horrible way to live life. It's crippling. Nothing's going to be perfect. Yeah. Um, it, it's almost procra- per- being a perfectionist is pretty much procrastination. Yeah. Well, I think women are more affected by perfectionism. Probably true. But maybe that's maybe that's not true. But there, I think like we have like a need for control if, within our lives. Are you suggesting they have less Dunning Kruger effect? Don't you dare pull it back to that. Don't, uh, We're not circling back on no, any of the no effects. DK, no DKE? No DKE. I will demote it, but it is like absolutely crippling and a real thing. I mean, in a perfect world, I'm like, nobody's a perfectionist and they put out, you know, good flawed work and it, it exists. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay it's to okay. not be perfect. All right. Promoter or demoted drinking the company Kool-Aid. I kind of like those people who are like wearing the shirt, wearing the Google hat. I, I kind of do too. Like you love your work. Why are we demoting that? That's awesome. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like so easy to just shit on people who are chugging the company Kool-Aid. But like, like, they don't know. Yeah. But like, that's awesome. Why? How much better would it be to go to work and be happy? enjoy it? Nah. Nah. Nah, I'm a salty dog. I'd rather bitch in the corner. No, I'm promoting drinking the company. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm promoting it to a point. Obviously, like there's points where the company's making bad choices, doing certain things. It's like you, you, you don't have to love a company in its entirety. Just like humans, companies aren't perfect. In fact, but, they're far from liking perfect. a bit of it is. Yeah. Enjoying what you do is not is not a crime. Promoted or demoted, gassing up coworkers. Promote. So promoted. So promote. I'm just, I'm picturing you on the sales floor, like chest bumping Travis. Oh my God. Yeah. Handshakes, doing our little friggin' dances. dances. When you cl- ring in the bell, yeah. like absolutely gassing each other up. Yeah. Like Slapping that, butts. that doesn't exist as much outside of sales. And I think it should be more. Yeah. Like let's gas each other up for that presentation that we just gave to the client. Yeah. How sick was that? I know from the outside, it feels cringy. It's like you watching a bunch of sales dudes gassing each other up. You're like, get me out of here. Totally. Get me out of here. But like somewhere deep inside, you're like- I wish I had that. I wish I was dapping them up. Totally. I wish they were dapping me up. I wish. I'm a little jealous. It's just freaking handshakes for days. I know. Deloitte didn't do a ton of dapping up. Yeah. They didn't not do a, a dapping training. Not a ton of dapping. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. Well, okay. Promoter demoted. Written self-assessments for annual performance reviews. Something that happens at companies. I'm not sure how we would promote it or demote it, but. Yeah. But do we think it's a good thing? Written self-assessments for annual performance reviews. As opposed to what? As opposed to just letting your manager give you your performance review. And it's all verbal. Well, they would still write no, but say you're re- reviewing yourself. Like you have to give yourself a, an annual performance oh, review. Oh, so, so this is self-assessments is, is the part we're promoting or demoting. Yes. The self-assessment I, I think, as, a, as a performance review. I think promoted. You have, to, you have to show what you've been doing and put your case together. I think it's hard because oftentimes it feels like an exercise in futility. And this is one of the videos. Of it. it was basically like when you get a three out of five on your performance review and you're just like so stoked but because nobody gets, because corporate says there's no fours or fives. Yeah. So it's like three out of five is meeting expectations. And so you need to basically show and advocate for yourself why you deserve the four or five. Yeah. Which I do agree with, but I mean, oftentimes people- es- Especially if your manager has eight reports. No, for sure. But I, I think a lot of times people will be like, here's all those, here's the ammo of why I deserve a four or five and they don't get it. And it feels, you're like, why did I do that? Yeah. Sometimes it feels like a cover letter. Especially in sales when it's so far outside of like the time you have to make those cold calls and like make the deal that would push you ahead. Yeah. It's like, why am I spending time on this? You're going to give me what you're going to give me. And like, it, it feels predetermined in a lot of ways. Like managers are going to pick their few favorites who maybe get this. Yeah. Bad and like, I think coming into your performance review with a very good sense of what you've done and what you've contributed, whether yes. it's written down or Absolutely. somewhere in your notes for you to reference is yeah. very important. Agreed. I totally agree with that. I just, yeah, I, I guess for me, the exercise is you're just, just really ne- You're just so negative. You're like, they already know he's getting promoted. Yeah, I guess I'm maybe, again, salty sales You're dog. so salty. Like, I'm like, if I pitch myself well, maybe it'll help. Someone hands me a, just a jug of company Kool-Aid and I slide it right to the edge. And say, yeah, I'm good. No, thank you. I'll take a chomp. Yeah, yeah. Give thank me a nice you. Give me a beef chomp. stick. That's all I want. Absolutely. Okay, promoted or demoted? Taking criticism. <laughs> <laughs> Demoted. I accept no, no criticism. I don't want to hear it from you. We get a bad review. We're like crying. Yeah. Oh my God. I can't take a single con- piece of constructive criticism if it slapped me across the face. Yeah. The person who gave us a three out of five hurt way more than the ones because the ones were so outrageous and ridiculous. It's like- it, The three gotta, out of five was like, it could be a little better. You know, there's some production issues. Like I see some potential like here. I, but I'm only going to give it a three for now. Yeah. Well, buddy, that sticks with us. Yeah. And that hurt. When people are like, not your best- Oh, kill me. Put two coins over my eyes and lock me in the sarcophagus <laughs> because it's do- I'm done. I'm I'm done. Just put me in the sarcophagus and You've shove me better. in a temple. Okay. Yep. Shove me right into yeah. a temple. Pharaoh, Pharaoh Ross. No, um, no, I mean taking criticism, everyone should do it. 
uh, it's good for you. There is nothing worse than the person who has an excuse for every piece of criticism or feedback that yeah, they're given. A reason, just always a reason, giving some reasons. Like just take it and be like, thank you for the feedback. It's even okay to say like, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I thank you for telling me. Yeah. But the person who's constantly like, well, uh, Stacy did that. And that's not, that wasn't even me or like has yeah. like just this fighting back. It, it just, it's not a good look. Right. Right. And obviously there's different degrees of criticism, constructive criticism. Everyone should get some of it. Every, you know, it's not always, everybody's experience is different. Right. But if you're getting a theme, if your criticisms are a theme and you're receiving that, like might be time to look in the mirror. I'm promoting taking criticism, even though, yeah, we, even though we can't. Yeah. Do as we say, not as we do. <laughs> Promoted. <laughs> Promoted. <laughs> Promoted. One other piece of criticism is like, who's it coming from? Do you respect that person? Is that person in a position that you want to be in? I saw something, Alex Hermosi. I follow him. Some people like him. Some people don't. Um, I think he has a lot of wise words, but he's like, you know, don't, don't listen to hate from people who don't have the position, job, life that you want. Absolutely. And we listen to feedback from each other. I think yeah. we've had pretty hard conversations and that those are some of the most helpful things because I respect you so much. And we yeah. have like a very mutual understanding well, like, and respect of each other. Exactly. And, it's understand we both have the same goal. It's yeah. not coming from a place of like malevolence. Totally. We both want, we both want success. So definitely. Cool. Promoted or demoted, cutting sandwiches diagonally. I just, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. About I don't know this. why it's on the list. I don't know. I don't have an opinion on it. Do you? People be like imposter syndrome, Dunning Kruger effect, cutting sandwiches, sandwiches diagonally. diagonally. It all kind of fits together. Right. It's just, it's our all... producer is such a troll. <laughs> he just like, he's like, wear a disguise, cutting sandwiches <laughs> diagonally. Like, what do you, what's your goal, Talon? He's With trying to upset us. What are you us? trying to do? It's working. I'm getting upset. <laughs> I'm getting upset. We're going to have to, let's say, let's say promoted or demoted at the same time for cutting sandwiches diagonally. Okay. Three, two, one. Demoted. demoted. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's too much crust. Yeah. Like what, like the ratio is weird. Like they, then you're biting into it and you leave nothing you but leave crust. You leave nothing but crust. Whereas. But if you then eat it diagonally. You're willing to eat a bit of edge because you right. get so much witch with it. Right. Right. So much sand. Right, so much sand, not as much witch. <laughs> yeah, not as much witch. Right, I suppose it's your preferred crust to not crust ratio. I suppose. I suppose. Can we do one more? Yeah. Uh, promoted, demoted group projects in school. <laughs> <laughs> I was always the person that just ran that. You did it all. Ran that thing. I have a funny story about a group project in school. It was in an IT management class and I was with a now professional football player. And I'm the person who is going to take control and say, you know what? You do the table of contents and then you try on what we were presenting on was these like AI goggles or some, some sort of the like Oculus or something. The, yeah. Yeah. Like some, this was in 2019. So you just try on the goggles and then just show kind of how they look. And then we will take it from there with like the key risks and all these other things. Right. And not a heavy task, not a heavy task. He also got me Nike shoes. He had a Nike deal. Like, yeah. thank you so much for that. That really appreciate that. Given I threw together the 30 slide deck. I yeah. really appreciate that. All he had to do was put them on and pass the baton to me. He puts on the goggles and he's standing there and he's going through an entire monologue of what he experienced when he first put on the goggles. So where is he? So we're in front of the class literally presenting. And he's like, I put on these goggles. I'm in Tokyo. I'm seeing bad bitches ass cheeks oh slapping God. up against each other. I'm in the club. <laughs> he said bad bitches ass cheeks. I'm not even kidding you. And I care so much about my grade in this yeah. class. I'm watching just him run us into the ground yeah. in a burning truck. He yeah. keeps describing these naked oily women. I'm dead serious. Right, I'm you're like, in the plane. The wing just fell off. It's <laughs> spinning it's towards spinning. the ground. There's smoke it's in the cabin. towards the ground. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, how did we get here? Like I gave him a note card with five bullet points. How did he take the creative liberties to get yeah. to a nightclub in Tokyo? You fostered a group with pure autonomy to do what they need to do. And they, he took it in such a different direction. He left early to play professional football as he should. He's a, yeah. he's a beast. I wish I could mention he's by name. He's still making tables of contents. But he's- <laughs> yeah. In the off season he probably. He didn't need to really do that group project. I don't think that really yeah. helped him, but- Needless to say, I'm promoting group projects in school. Yeah, you learn a lot. You learn a lot. Did you guys, what was the grade? I don't know. The teacher liked him. I think he gave the teacher a pair of Nikes too. Oh, he, oh, he was done. I went to Notre Dame. I mean, the football done. players ran shit. Yeah, they could yeah, do whatever they yeah. wanted. Like, oh. I mean, the, the football players in the test are like peeking over at my test. I remember just being And you're like, like sliding over so they can see it a I'm little like, bit better. Of course. Like, does this work for you? I got you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Score a touchdown this weekend. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my God. I wish, I wish I could go back to that moment because that story was- I, I, I lost my breath. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't speak. I'm in my business professional standing there like, 
what now? Yeah. We've lost He's probably wearing like full like And he has the, the, the goggles on, so we can't even like signal him like yeah. stop. Yeah. He's just talking right. and looking. Six foot eight. Two two thirty. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Nothing. Nothing. You're gonna let it ride. I'm gonna let him run. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dear Demoted, a segment where Ross and I weigh in and give advice to your real life. And stories. again, the thing we're reading is a, 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 a written out version of what you sent us, just typed out. This is word for word what you sent us, and we're okay. reading it out loud. This isn't this isn't us. Dear Demoted, question is talking about compensation not allowed amongst coworkers. I was on a Teams call with my boss, and he was screen sharing for a demonstration. Well, he left his inbox on the screen, and I saw that they have offered a new hire almost 10k more than what I'm making now. Mind you, I just got this raise on 2-1 for a position below me. I am a senior. This is super frustrating, but can anything ever be said or done? Thank you. Love listening to you guys. Thank you for that compliment Class, that made our day. Yeah, classic salary question. And yeah, love listening to us. <laughs> Again, imposter syndrome, you liar. I was just on a, um, I did Vivian Two's live show. She's yeah. your rich BFF on Instagram and TikTok. If you haven't seen her, she talks about like really normalizing the conversation around <laughs> money. Um, both with your relationships, with your job, right. all these things. And I think she's making really positive strides towards like having these com conversations and having them comfortably. There are people in the audience who are like, I'm getting married and my yep. fiance and I haven't even discussed like where we're at, where our credit card debt is. And like, I just think normalizing these discussions is super important. So in the workplace, I do think it's a fine line because not everyone, with salary transparency and stuff like coming out that's encouraging this, not everyone's gonna be comfortable talking about it, especially when it's For your sure. peers. Yeah. What is your advice here with her situation? I mean, I always go back to it's worth the conversation. It's all about your delivery. It's all about your tone. Yeah. Right. People, people say, and, and I think we're probably going to get more into like this finance, personal finance, discussing these things, even outside of the office. We're probably going to, I'm alluding to that. We're probably going to talk about that more down the road because I do think those conversations should be more, more normalized and people would rather talk about sex than they would rather talk about their finances, which is like totally crazy. But I, I would bring it up. What's the worst that happens? They say no. And do you bring it up to, you bring it up to the boss yeah. and you're just like, just, just clarifying here. Yeah. I mean, but this, to be clear, this isn't uncommon. In fact, the best way to grow your salary and earning potential is to leave your company overwhelmingly. Yep. That's just how it is. Like that is the reality. And so I don't think it's a slight on this person. I don't think this person is like, they were like, oh, well, this new hire is going to be so much better. It's just like, that's the reality of, of talent. It costs more. Each time it's going to cost more. You get a new job, you get paid more. Yeah. The raises almost never equate to what you would get if you left. Yep. And these cost of living adjustments and these like minor, you know, bumps that you're getting year after year, it's not enough. Vivian not actually enough. on stage said, someone asked like, my company doesn't allow us to have a side hustle. It's very written in that you can't do anything outside of work. And she's like, great, then you should be asking every year for a 15% raise yeah. to, to compensate for the money you could be making outside of this job. And I was sitting there on stage, just my mouth agape, like, just hell fired yeah. Up. Just I was fired getting up. so Go fired off, up. Yeah, literally. Go off. And she'd like answer these like extremely technical, like Roth versus 401k questions. She's like, yeah. Allie, anything to add? I'm like, I'm just sitting here taking notes, my yeah. queen. Yeah. I am just taking notes. You take it away. Yeah. But it was a really interesting discussion. So I do think you were more than more than able to just bring it up in a respectful way. And out of curiosity, I'm Max your Roth, max your 401k people. Just do that. If you got company matching, take advantage. Yeah. Do it. No one asking us for our financial tips, us getting into it. But yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Well, yeah. Always I'm ask. deep in the personal finance game. Something one of my favorite things to do. Um, okay. We'll, we'll, do so, an yes. we'll do an up on that later. I'm actually fired up about that. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Dear Demoted. Hi, Corporate Natalie. Loving the podcast. <laughs> well, thank you. I have a question for your Dear Demoted segment. I have recently transitioned from being an individual contributor to a manager overseeing a team of five. Most of my days are filled with back-to-back -back meetings and I end up having to work beyond the eight to five timeframe to keep up with everything and I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. I want to be sure I'm showing up prepared for my team and providing them the support they need to be successful in their roles. I fully appreciate at times of my career, it's worth putting in extra hours, but would like to get to the point where this isn't necessary every day. Do you have any tips on how to handle this transition? Okay. This is a big change. Yeah. I see to five direct reports is a big shift. Yes. And I think it's super interesting because the people, you have to kind of self-assess. You're like, I feel like in our career, we're constantly like, we want a team below us. We want to manage. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who are just better at being that individual contributor, like yeah. putting your headset on and getting your ish done, Yep. right? And so when you're managing, the big tip I have here is like really learn and exercise your ability to, de to delegate your, yeah. your actual work and your actual day-to-day -day tasks yep. so that you can spend the majority of your day, your eight to five, your nine to five, whatever you call it, managing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think when you're, when you become a manager, your job becomes much more about systems and building systems and building 
repeatability. And, and anytime you shift into a role like that, you're going to put in more time up front. Of course. That's the reality. Like, I, this is not uncommon. This is not wrong to do. This is the right thing to do. It's because you care. You're working harder because you care. Yeah. But I just think it's going to take time to get to that point where it will, it will get easier. It'll get significantly easier. You're going to have your one-on-one -on -one agendas. You're going to have like the systems of reporting required that you need to roll up the chain. You know, you need to get to know all five of your, your reports that yeah. takes some time. Each person's going to need different things. You're in your, everyone asks, I always think there's such a fallacy and like, what's your management style? It's like, I don't have one yet. Yeah. Your management style should be whatever that, whatever each individual needs. Totally. Like you're, it should change depending on who those people are and, and what your team is. And some people who don't need a one-on-one -on -one or don't like ask for it. Like, great. Leave them be like, I mean, yeah. have your, you know, whatever the minimum check-in is, but don't be like, Hey, can I check in? Is everything okay? Like don't give more of your time if it's not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think, you know, tips on how to, how to handle the transition. It's just, I, I don't think there is a specific, specific thing that's necessarily going to make this easier. It's just, this is the upfront investment of hopping into a new role and learning what those systems will be for each individual person. Like when I hired my first employee, I was putting in way more time than I ever had before yeah. because that training is just, it's grueling. You're like, I know how the process works. I've been running this company alone. Yep. Now I have someone else who I have to train on all these nuances and things. I like how I like things yep. and obviously different to your managing team's an investment. Situation. It's a total, it's investment. an upfront investment. And the hope is that, you know, it pays off later and it usually will. Totally. So, I mean, more specific. I don't, I don't know what the role is specifically. So it's hard to have like certain, but all tips. five people have to have a slightly different you know, style and, and wants and needs and understand who has more needs, who has less needs. Yeah, And you can go to your peers. There's other managers probably in that position and be like, Hey, what do you do? Yeah. Do you have templates? Do you have certain things that, 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 you know, work well? And, and is there a way I can adopt those for my team? And blocking that heads down time. Like I have two hours a day that I will be heads down working on my individual yep. contributions and I cannot, you know, be, have a meeting at this time. I think yeah. that's very fair. Yeah. I mean, managing your job is to make the life of your IC is easier and better, which is hard to do when you've got your manager being like, I need X, you know, y, Z. weekly yeah, reports totally. from each of those people and you have to be the bearer of bad news. Like your job is also simply to filter information as it comes up and as it goes down, the gripes are going to come up, the commands are going to go down Totally. and you got to figure out who you need to be for each of those, those stakeholders. Well, thank, that does it. Thank you for listening to this episode of Demoted. Yep. Follow us on socials. If you haven't already like comment, subscribe. Yep. And post a course, friendly review. Post a friendly review. We'll take the feedback if you have it. Maybe Feel free like, to email it to us too. Contact at demotedpodcast.com. Corporate confessions, dear demoted. We totally understand if you don't want us to eat chomps anymore, like we will take that and yeah. we'll, it'll hurt, but we'll, we'll listen. We'll eat it off camera. We'll eat it off camera. I'm going to keep eating beef sticks. You can't stop me. So thank you so much and tune in next week on Demoted. demoted.